And uh, I'm a member of the HPC team, and uh, I'm going to present you uh, two products of our HPC ecosystem that are AWS Batch and AWS Parallel Cluster. Uh, but first, an introduction. There are at least six reasons why to run in your HPC workloads on AWS. Uh, because you will have access to virtually unlimited infrastructure, and this allows you to scale on demand very quickly. And uh, you will only pay for what you use. Uh, also, the agility of AWS allows you to fast fail, uh, iterate quickly, and reduces time to results. And with our global footprint, you can increase collaboration with access uh, to clusters all uh, around the world. So this results in a faster time to results and a better uh, return of investment. So there are many tools for automating the process of launching an, an HPC cluster of, or workload in AWS. And uh, at the center, there is uh, EC2, which is Elastic Compute Cloud. Uh, our EC2 instances are optimized for different kind of uh, workloads. Uh, so networking is another vital component in this space, and we have a low latency network that enables HPC workload. Uh, we have also visual um, product to visualization, uh, which are, for example, AppStream or Nice DCV. And for storage, uh, we have uh, several uh, options that allow customers to choose from different kind of storage. And finally. Uh, to automate, automate the launch and management of cluster, you can use AWS Batch, Parallel Cluster, or Nice Engine Frame. And today we are going to get some more details into Batch and Parallel Cluster. So, AWS Batch. The core goals of AWS Batch is to help the customers to accomplish a few things. First, Batch is a fully managed service. Uh, so we want you to uh, focus on your jobs. So just tell us about the requirements of your jobs, the application you like us to run, and uh, we will figure out how to execute them so that you don't have to worry about the infrastructure. We want to make the service very easily integrated with as many other AWS services as possible because we see a lot of value that comes from the other services. And third, you can use the both EC2 on-demand and spot instances with batch, so without any challenge or complexity. So in summary, uh, batch offers fully managed batch computing primitives. Uh, okay, so now let's go over some AWS batch concepts, which are queues, computing environments, job definition, jobs of different uh, type, and the scheduler, of course. So let's start with uh, the job queues. In AWS Batch, jobs are submitted to job queue within your account. So you can have multiple job queues, and each of these job queues can have a relative priority to each other. So your jobs can reside in these job queues until they are ready to run, either because those jobs have an external dependency on another job, or because we are waiting for resources to be launched for those jobs uh, to run. So here is the CLI command that allows you to create uh, a job queue, for example. You specify a uh, job queue name, the priority, and the computer environment order. Well, the um, job queues that you created are mapped to one or more computer environment. You can think of a computer environment as a pool of resources um, or instances that your jobs use. So uh, there are two types of computer environments, the managed one and the unmanaged one. So the difference lies in uh, who manage the underlying resources. For managed computer environments, uh, you are giving batch um, some guardrails. You are telling us the, the minimum, the maximum, then desired number of vCPUs. Uh, you tell us which instance types you will, would like us to launch on your behalf. And you can either be very precise or select, for example, optimal or also an uh, instance family type like C4 and uh, let batch figure out the best instance type and sites for you based on your job sites and cost. So you can also use spot instances, telling us what percentage of on-demise pricing uh, you, you would like us to sit as a cap, to set as a cap uh, to control your cost. 
so next job definition. You can think of a job definition as a, um, a template for the job or jobs that you like to run. Uh, the job definition tells tell us uh, the application you'd like to run, the role that you'd like to associate with the job, uh, when it is exec executed, the month points, so batch knows uh, how you like them to map within uh, the container, uh, and when actually execute the job, as well as, as the environment variable and all, all the other properties that uh, of the container. Uh, some users create a job definition uh, per job. Some other users use a job definition as a template for a common uh, job type. Uh, because uh, during job submission, you can override some of the properties of the job definition. So, uh, jobs are the unit of work executed by AWS Batch. And basically, a job is a container, a container image, a command, and parameters. So when you submit a job, you have to specify the job name, the job definition, and the job queue. And you also have to op the option to override uh, some parameters that you have uh, defined in the job definition. So if you have a lot of jobs, say millions, it is not viable to submit uh, one job at a time. So instead of submitting uh, a large amount uh, of independent single jobs, Batch supports a feature called array jobs, where you can give us the command you'd like to run and say, run 1,000 copies of these, and uh, here's the array of parameters for all of those jobs. And then each job can do effectively the same thing, but each working uh, on, on their part of the, the bigger puzzle. So array jobs are great, for example, for Monte Carlo simulation or other kind of job. So many customers have a complex workflow where, for example, job two depends on the result of the job one. And uh, with batch, you can express uh, job dependencies. But what makes batch powerful is that uh, these dependency models can be uh, combined to create complex workflow. For example, uh, here we have job A, which is a simple job. And only after it has been completed, the, the job B can start. But the job B is an array job. Uh, and have also, has also a sequential type dependency, which means that each child array job completes sequentially, starting from index zero. Then we have job C, that starts only when all the, job, all the array job B is finished. And uh, job C is also an array job, uh, but, is, but has an end-to-end -end dependency with job D. D. What does it mean? That uh, each child each index child of the job D must wait for a corresponding index child dependency of the job C, in this case, to complete before it can uh, begin. So uh, you can have uh, multiple kind of uh, tasks in order to use your uh, job model. OK, and here are the new feature we recently launched which is a multi-node parallel jobs, which uh, uh, basically enable you to run a single, jobs, a single job that span multiple EC2 instances. So with the MNP jobs, you can run large scale, uh, tightly coupled, high performance computing application, and for example, distributed GPU model training, without the need to launch, uh, configure, and manage the EC2 resources directly. So AWS Batch uh, multi parallel node is compatible with any framework that supports IP-based uh, internode communication, like uh, TensorFlow or MPI, for example. And uh, uh, multi-node parallel job nodes are uh, single tenant, which means that uh, only a single job container is run on each EC2 instance. So uh, multi-node parallel jobs are submitted uh, as, as a single job. However, your job definition specifies the number of nodes to create for the job and what node groups to create. And each MNP job contains a main node, which is uh, launched first. After the main node is up, the child nodes are then launched and started. If the main node exit, the job is considered 
finish it. And the child nodes are stopped. Uh, the main node is a single subtask that AWS batch monitors in order to determine the outcome of the submitted multi-node job. Uh, so a node group is an um, identical group of job nodes that all share the same container properties. And AWS batch uh, lets you specify uh, up to five distinct node group for each job. So each group can have uh, its own container images, commands, environment variables, and so on. And at some mission time, you can override, as usual, what you have defined in your job definition. So um, the last batch concept is the scheduler. So it runs behind the scene, making sure that um, those jobs run in the right order on the appropriate uh, sized resources. Uh, the scheduler is also responsible for ensuring that we scale up and down appropriately with the right mix of the compute resources. And uh, AWS Batch currently uses a first in, first out scheduling algorithm, and uh, jobs run approximately in the order in which they are submitted, as long as all the dependencies have been uh, met. So, uh, typical batch workflow could be using Lambda or some other events uh, to trigger jobs or work next flow, for example. Or so you can give us a Docker command, a Docker container image, and the parameters with which you like to uh, ask to run the Docker image. Uh, this is a common use case for customers. Not the only way, of course, to use AWS Batch, which is data is fed into S3 bucket, and those arrival basically trigger. Um, a, lambda, a Lambda function that submit uh, the job to AWS. So the batch will schedule the resources and uh, launch the instance in the compute environments and make a track of the dependency, if there are any, and who run those jobs. So at the end of this computation the jobs, uh, you will be will able to uh, put the output into storage. It could be some other S3 bucket or database, uh, etc. So customers do not have to worry about uh, scheduling and uh, about the resources that, be, that have to be required, but just about the jobs. Here, the other product, which is Parallel Cluster. But first, let's start with a definition of an HPC cluster. What is an APC, 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 HPC cluster? It is a collection of tightly coupled compute, storage, and networking resources that um, enables you to run large-scale scientific workloads. So we can identify a job scheduler, uh, which is a distributed uh, application for the management of batch non-interactive jobs in a cluster of nodes, a master node where the, um, the main job scheduler's daemons are running to dispatch and manage jobs. So the user usually uh, connect to the master node and submit, monitor, uh, manage the batch job uh, from there, from the master node, and compute nodes, which is, is, the set, uh, is a set of uh, slave hosts where the actual job computation uh, takes place. And also, an important part, it's the storage, uh, which is shared among the master and the compute nodes. And AWS Parallel Cluster is a tool to easily deploy and maintain Elastic HPC clusters on AWS, where Elastic means that it can grow and shrink on demand. So um, to the AWS Parallel Cluster CLI, the user can easily create a cluster of EC2 instances with the job scheduler already installed and configured. So who is the target? Uh, scientists uh, who want to move the HPC workload to AWS which are not familiar with the AWS services, and they want to easily replicate their on-premises uh, environment on the cloud. So uh, Parallel Cluster is built on top of the AWS services. It is simple to install, easy to manage. Uh, everything you need to get a cluster up and running in uh, minutes. Support on demand, reserved instances, spot instances, has the ability to use pre and post-installed script, which means you can run whatever you want 
before the configuration of the scheduler, after. And uh, it's free to use. Customer only pay for the underlying uh, resource used. It's open source, so you can find it on GitHub. It's released with the Apache license, and it's a software package distributed to the PyPy software repository. So it is easy to install. Just do pip install AWS parallel cluster. And as on, once uh, you have a uh, parallel cluster installed, uh, you have the ability to configure it to suit your needs. So you can choose the operating system that, uh, from Amazon Linux, CentOS 6, 7, Ubuntu 14, 16. Parallel cluster also gives you the choice of running any of the popular open source schedulers that are available on the market. We support uh, Sanguine Engine, Sanguine Engine Slurm, uh, Torque. That, um, they manage statically defined clusters, but with AWS uh, parallel cluster, we make them elastic. And also, uh, last addition was to support uh, AWS Batch, which is elastic by design, but uh, AWS cluster bridges the gap with traditional HPC users uh, because it is a container transparent solution and bring an easy batch CLI, which is similar to traditional job uh, schedulers. And along with that, uh, we offer quite a few configuration options, like you can choose um, if you want encrypted storage uh, or how large and how fast your N NFS volume should be, the ability to limit how high your cluster can scale up so that you can control cost of it. You also have the ability to provide a custom pre post provisioning script so that your environment is a class exactly uh, what you want, what you need it. And uh, we provide also through the CLI, CLI a way to use your custom MEI. If you have an MEI with already all the packages installed, you can use uh, this MEI. And let's finally uh, create a cluster. You configure, you choose the scheduler type, the type of instance of the compute instance, the initial queue site, where queue sites here is the number of instance that will be launched. So, uh, you do this in a local machine, or uh, you do this uh, in a local in a local machine, or you can instantiate a. Uh, yeah, you yeah you install parallel cluster and configure it with your credential, or if you have already the CLI configured with your uh, credential, you can just use it. Mm -hmm. So let's create a cluster. The cluster create and your cluster. So it takes. Nine minutes in, the case, in this case, because it depends on the instance type you have chosen. And uh, I mean, you can run as many clusters in parallel as you need, and, uh, and that's it. So you then connect to the master node. You do parallel clusters, SSH, my cluster. And of course, if the, your uh, key is not in default uh, directory, you can specify another one. As you see now, we are uh, we have installed uh, SG Sanguine Engine. So with the co host, we are going to look at uh, what hosts are in my cluster. Just one, and uh, it has two CPUs. So now I uh, submit a very stupid job. I know you guys know how to use it better than me. This job requires three CPU. So it does uh, go. This job go pending because there is no resources in order to run this job, but uh, what it happens is that uh, Parallel Cluster basically launch an instance in order to let your job uh, run on the cluster. So in a, a couple, let's say less than a minute, another host, the same time you have chosen in the configuration file, will, will, be, will be launched and now you are able to uh, run your job. So basically your job run on the two nodes of your cluster. And of course, when uh, at the end when your job terminates, uh, by default, after 10 minutes that it stays idle, it gets uh, deprovisioned, it gets stopped. So you only pay for what you need. So here is the, the um, integration with the AWS batch, which you choose as a scheduler and uh, here, instead of choosing the uh, number of instances, you choose the um, dedicated the batch parameter, which has 
the minimum vCPUs, the uh, desired and the maximum number of CPUs which you want to be in your cluster. And also the instance type. In this case, I've chosen the M4 family for my, uh, for my cluster. And yes, the same as before, like it, is, like it was a traditional uh, HPC cluster. So P cluster create may batch cluster. It takes in six minutes to create, and what we do, uh, we create the job definition, the compute environments for you. You don't have to worry about creating them. And here's come the good. You can log in into the master node, and you can uh, run um, the, this uh, AWS batch CLI that we provide with parallel cluster. What does it mean? That you can do AWS B host to see which are the hosts that are running in your batch cluster. You can run a script like uh, giving a script to a standard input to the AWS B sub command, or you can put the, the script uh, in a file and then provide it to the AWS B sub command along with, uh, with parameters. You can control the status of your jobs with the AWS B start, and you can see, you can check the output of the of your, of your job with AWS B out, providing the, the job ID. So AWS Parallel Cluster comes with an easy batch CLI, which is similar to traditional job schedulers. It is a container transparent CLI to make it familiar for, to, uh, yeah, to make it familiar for traditional HPC, HPC users. And you can interact with batch in the same way you would with a traditional HPC cluster. So uh, here is some, uh, we are going to list some uh, tips to optimize your workload, which are valid, uh, can be valid for batch or parallel cluster. This, li this slide uh, shows the roundup of our instance families, each tailored for a set of workloads. So um, you have to choose the best uh, compute instance type that fits the workload, your workload. So. Um, the instance type should match the ar architecture of the job and not vice versa. So we have an uh, instance type for uh, general purpose, memory optimized, uh, computer optimized, etc. Um, the next component to run your HPC workload and on AWS is networking. Uh, with the Elastic Network Adapter, ENA, the traffic between the instances can go up to 25 gigabits per second. And now AWS customer can benefit from a predict predict predictable uh, low latency, high bandwidth network to run the HPC workloads. And so now that you have chosen the right instance type, you are using the network that is suitable for HPC workloads. Let's talk about uh, how to store data on AWS. Uh, at AWS storage is a platform. So you can store your data using file, block and object storage. For file storage, there is Amazon EFS, which is Elastic File System, that allows user to launch petabyte scale file system in minutes. For block storage, uh, there is the EC2 instances. We have either uh, Amazon ABS, which is Elastic Block, block Store. Uh, you can also store your data in object storage using uh, Amazon EC3 or uh, Amazon Glacier. So e EFS is a uh, it's highly available service. It's a managed service, and you can attach the EFS storage to more than one EC2 instance at a time because basically it's a network file system. EBS is a block storage, so you can, for example, if you want, if you need, you can do write zero with multiple block storage. It is really fast and it's cheaper compared to EFS. And you can snapshot an ABS volume uh, while it's still running for backup reason. And then we have S3, which is an object store, which is a little bit different uh, from a file system. And it's great for um, short-term activity. It's good also for long activity, activity, but Glacier in this case is uh, more cost efficient. It is great for storing logs and it's uh, highly available, redundant, uh, it, it, it is much cheaper than uh, EBS. 
and Amazon Glacier is uh, very good for long-term archive storage and it's extremely cheap to store in Amazon Glacier. And so, uh, some recommendations that can be useful. Uh, you can launch or start instances in a placement group, which determines how the instances are placed placed on the underlying uh, hardware. Um, so, for example, if you intend to submit uh, an AWS batch multi-parallel node uh, jobs to a computer environment, consider creating a cluster replacement group, because in this way uh, it keeps your multi-node parallel jobs as a log on a logical grouping of instances which are in close pro proximity to each other with high network flow potential. So other recommendations are to use, use the, the right instance type for your workloads and uh, using placement group, uh, elastic network adapter and the right uh, instance type size, you can, you can go up to the 25 gigabit per second. Another recommendation is to use the latest uh, MEI operating system uh, to uh, use an updated version of kernel to test your application with hyperthreading on and off, and also to see if CPU affinity can give you a hand, and also uh, try to use processor state to reduce process variability. And that's all. <laughs>